What's up? Yours truly once again, Michael Ferreira. And in this session, we are talking about the challenging moments. The moments where it's not so great and not so fantastic. So, how to sell luxury and high price items when you're in a slump. Now, I know this will be valuable to someone and throughout the, the time frame of life and me doing this for a number of years, things happen and it just is what it is. And sometimes there's slumps, sometimes there's slow moments, sometimes there's periods where it could just be better, you could sell more, you could do more. So how do you sell luxury and high price items when you feel like you're going through a, a down moment or a slump or whatever you may call it? And before we get into the content, if you're not already, please subscribe, please like, please comment, and please share. Maybe this content is not for you, but maybe it's for someone that you know or someone that had just mentioned to you that is going through a slump or a challenging moment in their business. Share this video with them. And for yours as well, please subscribe, please like, and please share. Now, the number one thing to remember when you're in a luxury or a high ticket item, it is so important that your mind is always in the right, in the right place. And remember, slumps often begin inside of our mind and remind yourself why you sell luxury items, why you sell high ticket items, why you sell the over and above and whatever it is that you provide to your clients because most of the time, the reason that you're in the luxury business or in a private sector or an elite space is because of your mindset. Most of the time when you're in a high ticket luxury space, it's not about the dollar amount, it's not about the physical thing, it's because of the mindset that you have and the mindsets that your clients have that allow them to think above and beyond the norm. So you have to remember that as well. This slump that you're going through most of it is probably mental. Probably 90% of it is mental. It's just getting over, over yourself and getting out of your head and telling yourself whatever the situation that you're going through to actually propel you to go to a higher level and get back on your game. Because when you're in a luxury space, it's not about the item. It's about the mindset. So as you, you train and develop your mindset to get back on course, it'll allow you to take your game to the higher level and back to what you're normally used to doing. Number two, act as if the slump does not exist at all. Yeah, now that sounds weird, but it's so important to not fall into the to the trap. Many times we heard of individuals that when you're sick, you know, rather than being sick and just staying asleep all day and, and down and out and in a rut, you want to do things to get your body in a norm. Exercising, going to a sauna, uh, moving around like normal, trying your best at least when you're sick. So the same thing that you should be doing when you're in a so-called slump or downturn in a high ticket luxury business, whether you're, you know, high level car salesman or salesperson, uh, luxury real estate, um, um, high end fashion, jewelry, um, luxury shoes, whatever it is, high price ticket items is a lot of time related to being and doing and acting the part. So act as if you are not in a slump anyway. So think about it. What would you be doing if you weren't technically in a slump? You probably would call more people. You probably would reach out to existing clients. You probably would go out and mix and mingle and network, maybe go to some high-end luxury uh, bars or, 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 or private locations, uh, shopping spaces where individuals that, that purchase your item go. Um, you also want to be in a space where you're just acting and doing everything as normal. You don't want to give into it because as you give into it, you might be just propelling yourself and digging your hole deeper into that slump that you're technically call it. So act as if you're not in a slump anyway. What would a person that's not in a slump be doing? What do they wake up early? Do they go to work on time? Do they, you know, call more people? What is it that you do in the normal, in your space, in your industry, when you're not in a slump that you're not doing right now? And that's kind of an additional or a bonus to think about. As you, you find yourself in a slump in a luxury or a high ticket space, you want to evaluate what you're doing that got you there. But more importantly, when you're in a high ticket luxury space, it's about what you're not doing. What are you not doing that puts you in this predicament that you're currently in? Are you not calling on your existing clients? Are you not 
following up via emails? Are you not communicating regularly? Are you not networking? Are you not going to private events? Are you not uh, interacting and engaging with the right crowds that can buy and, and use your product? In the luxury space, it's not about what you, what you do, it's about what you're not doing. The things that got you successful in the first place, remember you need to continue to do that. And those are the things that will always keep you on top of the game. Number three, we kind of touched on this as we segued in from number two to three, is hang out in places where other people are winning. So talk to your peers, talk to your colleagues, people that might be in a different industry, but at the same luxury level. If you're that may be maybe they're co-workers or peers that even work with you that are doing well in business, that are doing well in their luxury in their space. They're they're selling jewelry in a, in a great capacity right now. They're winning. You know, you might not be in the challenging moment you are, but they're winning. You know, they're selling high level shoes. They're selling clothing. They're selling uh, Rolls Royces or or luxury cars or whatever it is. How can you hang out with those people? and still be able to be happy now you don't hang out with them to say like oh my gosh this guy's winning i'm not this girl is winning i'm not i'm offended i'm, I'm mad i'm upset i was done wrong i was whatever it is no you got to get around those people that are doing well so you can commend them congratulate them and, and allow them to feed into you just your positivity and desire to give and, and reward them and commend them will open up the door for you to also win. So hang around with other environments. When you hear stories of other people telling that they sold a, you know, another $10 million house or a $5 million house or a, a $30,000 piece of jewelry or a whatever piece of item that is in your space or in your industry or similar to your industry, find other people that are doing it and doing it well and hang out with them, commend them, congratulate them, and that'll open your ideas to, to, to expand and gain some insight on the things that you can do and implement to take your game higher. Number four, say thank you. Give, give, give. This is so important, and this will be a twofold number four because there's there's two things that 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 happens here you need to reach out to your existing clients and just say thank you your existing customers say thank you reach out say hello how is your car doing how is your tuxedo how was that wedding that you did how was the uh, engagement that you proposed how was the whatever it is when is your you know etc coming up how is your family Talk about things that are not related to your product and thank them. Just say hello. Just say thank you. Do not go in there with an agenda. Do not call them, say hello, say how you're doing, and by the way, I want to sell you something. No, do not do that. Just go in there genuinely, say thank you, give love, give respect, give gratuity, and naturally by saying thank you and giving to the people that have already provided to you and have already bought from you and maybe regularly buy from you, it may just open the door to remember. Like, oh, it may not happen right there on that call or that email or that text message or whatever it is, but it will happen. They may think about like, oh, my friend was been has been thinking about buying whatever, whatever. Or, you know what? I have this coming up. I'll need to reach out to you for or I've been thinking about X, Y, and Z. Most of the time in a luxury space, sometimes it's impulse buys, but many times luxury items are well thought out and well planned. It's that they know they're doing a certain certain aspect or they're closing a big deal or your clients are having another level accomplished or they want to go to a higher level. So they're thinking and they're planning of it. People that buy luxury items, they plan for it. They mentally think and envision the thing that's actually going to come to them. So they start thinking about it prior to it being in existence. So reach out, say hello, say thank you, give to the people that have already supported you and thank them for that. Number five, just the opposite from your existing clients is that you want to give. You want to be in a position where you can give value to potential clients and other people that are not using you, but they do need your service or the product that you provide. How can you give value in some capacity? Maybe it's sharing some insight on the luxury brand or company that you represent. Having insight on the history of something may, may open the eyes like, oh, I didn't know that. 
That's cool to know. Again, they may not need to buy right now, but it's good to know. Maybe remind someone else of, of how long your company has been in existence for, you know, 30 years, 40 years. So maybe on a high luxury brand, maybe it's been in existence for 100 plus years. Maybe a fun fact, you know, the history of the, you know, Bentley or the history of Ferrari is this. Did you know the car that you drive was first initiated in dot, dot, dot? Did you know the first time that we really got to pink diamonds or luxury diamonds that you own was this, this, and this? Again, giving value, giving insight, or maybe if it's in the form of a webinar, a seminar, or a coaching call, maybe even a workshop or a session, something simple of value that you can give to people that might be interested in your product, but they don't know you. How you can give value and then open the door and opportunity for other individuals. The second thing that this ties into, as we mentioned in number four and number five, combining them, these are things that you should be doing regularly. So the second part of number four, rather than just saying thank you, and the second part of number five of giving value is you have to, you should be creating a system. Like what is the system that you put in place so that you're never in a slump ever? I do believe that it's possible to never be in a slump. And there are individuals that probably are at that level. There's been times that, that we've experienced it too at Michael Ferrer Bespoke, you know, where, you know, we had a big season of weddings and, you know, a lot of people were buying luxury tuxedos and suits and then it just changes sometimes. And over, after doing this over 13 years, it just happens. You know, we're at the point now where we can predict a lot and we know what's going to come. We know when wedding season is. We know when people are going to re-up their wardrobe and a continuous return of business. But at Michael Ferrer Bespoke, we created systems. Like what are those systems where you always say thank you to your clients and reward them and how you can always bring value to new and potential clients that know you and don't know you. So create a system. That's the second part to four and five that will allow you to continue to win. So think about that. Think about those ways that can propel you and take your game to another level because it's not, again, what you're, what you're doing that makes you says you. It's what you're not doing. The things that you are not doing anymore that got you to the place of being at the top. Remember to continue to do those things and you will always win. Now, last and finally, number six. This is probably the most actionable item. It is the easiest to do, but it's the hardest to implement. Number six is that you have to position yourself and give yourself a 30 day challenge. Yeah. It sounds cheesy, it sounds corny, and I learned this a while back from, from a couple of workshops and sessions that I take, and really from a session in Earl Nightingale, like create yourself a 30-day plan, a 30-day challenge, like challenge yourself. What are the things that you're going to do to get back on your game? And then write down what is that goal, that one goal that you're seeking that you want to, you know, you know, close five more deals, close one client, you know, whatever it is. Maybe this could even be a 15 day plan. I found 30 to be more successful because it, it gives you time to to adjust, reevaluate and genuinely focus in. There are times where you just straight up need money. It is what it is. We've all been there. And, and I know I've personally been there in my life. But you, you have to know when you're in a luxury game, when you're in a high ticket game, when you're in an elite environment, you got to be in for the long game. Because if you're in for the long win, that's where you get to truly benefit and truly gain the most value and potential out of being in that industry. If you're there for the quick sales, the one, two, yeah, you'll make money. You'll, you, yeah, that will happen. That's cool. But the big wins come when you can have repeat and multiple and a frethora of business at an elite, a high luxury level without doing a lot of work, but just simply bringing a lot of value to people. So create that 30 day challenge. What is that challenge? What are the things that you're going to do every single day? Are you going to wake up a little earlier? Are you going to call? five more clients are you going to email uh, a few more people what are the things that you're going to do to get you back to where you know you need to be and then propel you to another level because one thing that I learned from one of my coaches a while back Nate Brooks um, and I still use Nate Brooks and Associates all the time is that once you reach a, a certain level you never go back 
You never go back. And many of you in the luxury space, you know this. Once you reach a level of car, it's really hard to go back. <laughs> you know, if, if you drive a Bentley, that's where your standard is. It, it goes higher. I have multiple clients that, you know, literally have, have had that and then they just go to the next level of car. You know, uh, but Ferrari, Rolls Royce, all relative. I think Rolls Royce is, is the car. But, you know, that's just an example. Don't worry about the, the physical item that I mentioned. But never go backwards. If you get to the point where you, you, you've got to the point where you always have a, a, a an assistant, you don't go back to not having so you figure out a way to to have that always in your play again the same thing with food the type of food that you eat uh, whether you when you eat healthier you don't go back to eating bad you only go to eating better and propelling yourself to a higher level so keep these things in mind these six proven facts will help you get back on your game and get out of a slump and how to sell luxury items when you are in a down moment or a slump. So please use this. Please comment. Please like. Please subscribe. If you've used or implemented some of these, please let us know. And also, please share it with somebody else. If you have some other ideas you think could be valued, tell the community. That's where this is here to give. If you have some other ideas, write them below in the comment section. I will see you soon. As usual, style your life. And as you know, you can have everything in your life that you want as long as you truly believe it. We'll see you soon.